Hey everyone, welcome to Moving Matt. We do vlogs, travel, and some camera stuff. And today, I thought it would be a good idea before we move into 2021 to look back on the amazing year of 2020. <laughs> okay, it was a terrible year, but the amazing year of 2020 for cameras. And I'm gonna go through my top five picks of best cameras of 2020. I hope you can hear me properly. There is an insane amount of birds out here and they're being extremely selfish and self-centered and flying up there thinking they're better than me. But I'm not gonna neander anymore. I'm gonna get right to the list. At number five, I have the Nikon Z6 Mark II. And well, technically I have the Z7 Mark II as well. They're kind of like twin cameras. So you could call this top six, but they're just both taking the number five spot. And the reason I'm giving them the number five spot is because they really did improve pretty much everything we were wanting them to. They added the two card slots, put in 4K 60, as well as improving the autofocus. And so I feel like they did a lot of things right. The reason that they're number five and not any higher on this list, or, or lower technically, they're not doing any better on this list is because it kind of felt like those features that they added and they did improve upon a lot of things were the features that should have been in their original Z6 and Z7 already. And it kind of felt like this was a mid upgrade. It didn't really feel like anything that was a, a revolutionary step. So that's why they're at number five, but they did come a long way and it gives me a little bit of hope for Nikon's future. Hopefully I can block the wind a little bit here and it kind of looks artsy a little bit. I mean, they can't even catch my eye here. Okay, moving right along at number four, I have the EOS R6. And the reason I have the EOS R6 at number four is because when it was first announced, there was an extreme amount of hype around it. The photo capabilities are pretty incredible. It has really good low light. And I think for a lot of people, this was going to be maybe the best camera of 2020. But then there was a few bad things and that's why it's not getting any higher on my list here they had quite a bit of overheating problems even in pretty much any 4k mode they had they also didn't add the all eye codex and i think that really hurts them i think that if they add a firmware to help this out then i could really call this maybe the best camera of 2020. so at number three i have the fujifilm xt4 and it's kind of crazy because i looked it up and I barely even remember that that was this year. That just shows how long this year feels. But this camera really did a lot of things first, at least in the compact mirrorless market. They gave us a 10 bit 60 4K. Uh, they gave us 240 1080p. And of course, Fujifilm has their incredible color science and just all around pleasing look. Even the dynamic range was really good, especially for APS-C style camera. They did pretty much everything right, except the autofocus was a little bit wonky, as well as the IBIS didn't really function very properly. And I believe there was some overheating issues with that as well, because it's such a small body. But it was an excellent camera, and I'm excited to see where Fujifilm takes their cameras in the future. And the X-H2 is rumored to maybe be coming out this year. And I think they could really smooth over a lot of the, the pitfalls that were in the T4 and maybe create the perfect camera <laughs> or at least the perfect in its price range. One and two, we're getting down to it. And I'm guessing by process of elimination, you can probably guess which are the last two here. And I really struggle going back and forth because I think both of these cameras are great for their own reasons. But the reason I put the Canon R5 at number two is, yes, it was pushing the envelope and it's an incredible camera. I mean, 45 megapixels, it takes uh, 12 frames per second, mechanical, 20 electronic. The autofocus is vastly improved and incredible. They did 8K raw. I mean, that's silly. 8K raw in such a small body. Who would have ever thought that Canon would do 8K RAW in such a small body? But there's a couple things that take it down a notch and it's the reason I don't have it as my number one. First is the elephant in the room and that is the overheating. It is an incredible camera and it's incredible what they were able to accomplish, but that overheating really, really hurt its reputation, especially in the beginning. And although I do think that they've really helped it with firmware, 
I still think it's a problem and I think it left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth. But probably the biggest complaint I have about the R5 is the codecs look like they're pretty much impossible to edit unless you have one of the new M1 Macs or you have an extremely expensive Mac of the past. And I don't wanna be working in proxies and I think a lot of people don't wanna be working in proxies. And to me, that really tampered everything. I mean, if you, if you have to work in proxies, that's one thing if you're doing 8K, but if it's just because the codex isn't working properly, then I think that's an issue. And that's the reason it doesn't take my number one, but it's still an incredible camera. I think it's probably the best hybrid camera of 2020, but I think another camera deserves the number one spot. Okay, I really tried to finish this outside, but I was becoming a shadow, so. For my number one pick, I did not want to have to rush this number one pick. Y'all all know what it's going to be, but I got to glow on it a little bit. And it's the Sony a7S III. So this camera had an incredible amount of hype to live up to. And really nobody thought it could live up to the hype. And it's kind of funny because they didn't live up to the hype by going and doing all the crazy things that a lot of people were expecting, like 6K and 8K and global shutter. They didn't really do any of that. But what they did do is perfect the technology that they had at hand. And by perfecting all the technology that we have at hand, it really added up to an incredible camera. The low light is insane. The 4K 120 is probably the best 4K 120 we can get. The dynamic range has the dynamic range of a lot of cinema cameras. It really is incredible, all the different formats they put into it. Of course, the 10-bit. I mean, they did pretty much everything that we could really ask for. They didn't go above and beyond. They didn't go add all kinds of crazy features like the Canon R5 did but they also didn't overheat and they also were extremely reliable in what they were doing and so for that reason I think the Sony a7s 3 deserves the number one pick and even though I'm a Canon shooter I can give props to Sony here so kudos to you Sony you have my number one spot of top cameras of 2020 but hey everybody that's just my opinion drop in the comment section below and let me know what is your top five cameras of 2020 did any of my cameras make your list is your list in a completely different order are you looking at cinema cameras and think the c70 and the fx6 are the top cameras let me know in the comment section below and if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing and until next time peace